Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Flow Home Electric Vehicle Charger. Flow offers this unit in two varieties. The X5, which we have here today, is the PLC connected smart charging version of the Flow Home. That sells for $695, but Flow also offers a non-smart version called the G5. That sells for $495. The two chargers are virtually identical, other than the fact that they come in different colors and one's a smart charger and one isn't. So the installation process and all the other features that we're gonna talk about are the same for both. So let's open up the box on the X5, see what comes inside. Okay, so we have the body of the unit here, a 25 foot long cable with a J1772 connector. With this connector, you can charge any electric vehicle in North America, including Tesla vehicles with the North American charging standard connector, but you need an adapter to do that. We have the PLC module here and an ethernet cable. You're gonna need that to pair it with your app. And then the instruction guides here on the end, along with this card here. And the card includes a special pairing code that you need in order to pair this unit with your Flow app. Okay, well now that it's out of the box, let's talk about how to install the Flow X5 and G5. First off, the mounting bracket comes attached to the unit. You need to have a 3 16 Allen wrench. Doesn't come with the unit. Quite often the chargers give you an Allen wrench if you need it in the installation, but Flow doesn't. So you need a 3 16 Allen wrench and you unscrew. There's a single screw on the bottom that attaches the mounting plate and it lifts off. Now, once you've got this off, and by the way, this unit is heavy. It's probably, not probably, it is the heaviest EV charger that I've ever reviewed. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit later about why that is. It's primarily because it's such a robust and well-built unit. This thing is solid cast aluminum. It's it's seems like it's incredibly well-built. We'll take a deeper look at that later. But for now, okay, so you remove the mounting bracket you're going to want to mount this on the wall. The instructions say that you should, you should use a minimum of six screws. There's actually nine holes here for you to use. So, I mean, ideally it would be best if you could get the ones down the middle and uh, mount it to a stud, a wood stud. Quite honestly, I think if you were to get all three of those into a nice wood stud, it would be enough, but it wouldn't hurt to put um, uh, more screws in. The more, the better. This thing is so heavy that you really want to make sure this is really well secured to the wall. I always say that in my reviews to make sure it's really secured well, but because this is much heavier than usual, it's even more important to make sure you've got this thing mounted really strongly to the wall. Um, so let me go and mount this to the wall and then we'll show how uh, we attach the charger to it. But first, let's take a look at the key features of the Flow Home X5. Okay, so the X5 costs $695. As I mentioned earlier, the G5, the non-smart version of this costs $495. Dimension-wise, it's 17 inches tall, seven and a half inches wide, and it comes off the wall 6.9 inches. It's a 30 amp unit, which can deliver 7.2 kilowatt. 30 amps is not a high power unit compared to what most electric vehicle chargers offered today are. Again, we'll talk about that a little later. It does have adjustable power output, so you could dial that back all the way down to six amps if you need to, uh, and of course goes up to the 30 amps. It has a 25 foot long cable, which is a nice long cable, J1772 connector. It has a NEMA 4 rated enclosure. That's pretty much as high as it gets for wall mounted electric vehicle chargers. This is a really well made unit that is meant for outdoors. I mean, you could use it indoors, but it's so well constructed. It's almost as if this was really designed for extreme harsh temperatures. Uh, the operating temperature is 122 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the number to really look out there is a negative 40 because most electric vehicle chargers are rated for 122 degrees Fahrenheit on the high end. But on the low end, 
Very rarely do I come across a product that is rated for such extreme cold weather. Now, Flow is a Canadian company, and they do say that this was engineered for the harshest of Canadian winters, where it gets very cold, and I guess that's why it goes way down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a PLC-connected smart charger. Now, typically, we do Wi-Fi-connected smart chargers. I'm going to explain the difference to that a little later. It is Energy Star certified. It can power share with a second unit, so you can use two of these Flow X5 units on one power feed. It is CSA certified. CSA is a Canadian standards, so it's very similar to what we use the UL listing here in the US and ETL in Europe. So that's a, a acceptable safety certification, uh, CSA. It has a five-year warranty, which is outstanding. Most electric vehicle charging equipment only have three-year warranty. Uh, the five-year warranty is about as long as it gets, which is really good, and it's going to get some extra points in our charger rater for that. The unit is designed and built in Canada. All right, once you have your mounting plate on the wall, you're going to want to mount the unit. Now, to do so, first you need to remove this front cover plate, and you use the same 3 16 Allen key to remove the two screws on the bottom front of the unit. Very simple. Let's spin those off. Now when you take these out, make sure there's a little uh, rubber gasket in here. Make sure that doesn't fall off. Okay, once the two screws are out, the front of the the front cover plate lifts off at an angle. It has like a hinge. So you pull the bottom, let me see here. And you see how this hinges like this? And then you lift it up. Now, exposes the innards. So what you're gonna do is, this gets hung on the top, and then pushes down, and then again, now tighten the one screw that's in the bottom. Now that screw won't fall out. It's tethered to the uh, back of the mounting bracket, so you don't have to worry about losing that one. Let me tighten this up here. I'm just gonna make it hand tight. That's fine. Okay, so now you can see the inside of the unit. This is just the cover plate. As far as bringing in your power, there's two places where you could do that. There's a three quarter inch cutout on the back here, and if you Remember, I should have pointed out on the back of the mounting plate, there's a big hole right here, and that's where you'd bring your power in if you're coming through the wall. If you have an external power source conduit running along the wall, there's a three quarter inch knockout on this side, you bring the power up here. Either way, the power has to come in in this area here, because these are the terminal blocks right here where you're gonna land your wires. Now I say you. Um, as I uh, always say here on State of Charge, highly recommend you not doing this yourself. Hire a licensed, qualified electrician, somebody that is particularly a specialist in electric vehicle charging equipment. Uh, Flow has actually partnered with my channel sponsor, QMerit. QMerit is the preferred installer for Flow charging equipment, and I highly recommend reaching out to QMerit getting a price quote on your installation. You know it's done right. A lot of power is flowing through these units for many continuous hours, every time you use it, sometimes every night of the week. And you know, you saved a couple hundred bucks, but you know, if you have a fire or a problem down the road, you know, that's the, that's the worst two or $300 that you saved by doing it yourself. In any event, um, that's where the uh, wires get landed. We're not gonna go through that whole procedure now because I'm actually, because I do things here in the garage, I need to continuously uh, review products. I don't hardwire the chargers because it would just be too much work taking them apart. And I have uh, just a plug here. I'm gonna actually turn this into a plug-in unit with a NEMA 1450 plug for the purpose of this review. However, I don't. I would not use this long term that way. It's not recommended. Flow wants these uh, chargers to be hardwired. That's how they designed it to be, and that's what I recommend you doing. Uh, what you do is on your own. But my recommendation is to have this hardwired by a professional. You know, it's done right. Okay, so. Um, that's where you bring your power feed in and that's where you land the terminals. Then of course, again, you just take the top of the unit, hook it on, and then put the two screws in down here and it's done. 
Now, I'm going to mention one other thing while I'm here. The units are power adjustable. They can deliver up to 30 amps, but you can dial it all the way down to 6 amps. With the X5, the smart charger, you do that in the app after you've completed the installation. But if this was the G5, within the instructions, it shows you how to derate the power if you want to derate the power. And you would do that, I think it's right here or here. There's a little uh, circular dip switch where you set the unit to deliver the power that you want to put out. And again, it's all in the instructions. It tells you where to set the dial to deliver the power that you want. Now, people might ask, well, why would you want to derate this? Well, sometimes people don't have the electric capacity in their home to deliver full 30 amps. To deliver 30 amps, you need a 40 amp circuit because you can only deliver for continuous load 80% of the circuit's maximum power. So for a 30 amp delivery, you need a 40 amp circuit. Uh, let's say you did load calculation on your uh, your uh, service panel, which is another reason why you want a, pro a licensed electrician, because they should perform a load calculation first to make sure you're not overloading your whole home's uh, electric by adding a charger. But if you do this, the load calculation, you realize, geez, I can really only spare 24 amps without overloading my panel. What you would then do is derate the power so that you're only pulling 80% of 24 amps within that dip switch or within the app if you have the X5. But I wanted to point out it's somewhere right in here. Uh, I'll show the picture of it on the video while I, uh, once I'm editing the video, because I know it's in the instructions. I saw it when I was reviewing the G5 instructions. But for the X5, you do it within the app. Okay, let me put this thing together and then we'll uh, talk more about uh, my initial impressions on the flow. Okay, so I have the Home X5 up on the wall. I have to tell you, it's a very stylish charger. One of the nicest looking units, in my opinion, and I know looks are subjective, but I think Flo did a really nice job making it look very elegantly designed. I like that it has this uh, cable management right here in the front. I actually prefer it rather than going over the top. It's a very, very nice solution here. Another thing that I noticed when I uncoiled the cable, it immediately drooped straight down. It didn't uh, remain kind of bent out wide and then take a while for it to droop down. That tells me that the jacket on this cable is rubberized. It's not plasticky. So I think this is going to perform really well in my cable deep freeze test. I'm actually really looking forward to that. Um, you could tell I'm a nerd when I really look forward to cable deep freeze tests. But yeah, that's, uh, that's me, Tom, the charger nerd. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Also, the connector is a really good connector. I like this connector. Really feels good in your hands. The outside of it is rubberized. This is rubber. That's not cheap plastic. And the uh, locking pin on the top here, this is metal. So it's really well built. I, I like the, the overall, the construction of this unit is excellent. It's going to get extra points in the charger rated because this is an extremely well built unit. I mean, I, th this might be the, the best built, like strongest constructed charger that we've recorded here. And I know Clipper Creek uh, makes very well uh, made uh, chargers. Uh, and so does Grizzle E, their aluminum casing, really well made, good for harsh environments. But this might actually be the, the, the best made, toughest charger that we've uh, reviewed here. In any event, we'll see how it holds up to all our testing, but I am looking forward to the cable deep freeze test. The connector holster is also very nice. I like how it's uh, elegant here in the front. You can see it's much wider than the connector. Sometimes the connector holsters are the exact size of the connector. And if you're not perfect, you're, you're, do you're doing this in order to get it to lock. But because this is so big and it's tapered, no matter how you push it in there, it's going to connect and it's going to hold it. So even if you're going on an angle and do that, it's going to lock, which is good because a lot of times people are in dark garages or dark areas and it's not well lit. You're fumbling to find where the, where, where is it? Where do I plug it in? But with this, it's almost like just stick it in there anywhere and it's going to uh, holster nicely. Now, I don't think that flow has an LED light in there. Um, I'll know when I energize it. I, I, I hope they do because it would even be better if there was a little backlit LED in there so that you can really find it very easily in dark environments. 
Okay, so next what I'm going to do is connect the plug. We'll start using this guy and see how it works. Okay, as you can see, I have the Flow Home installed now. I attached my NEMA 1450 cable here, turned her on, she's working just fine. I actually used it to charge all three of my electric vehicles. So first test I always do is to plug in all three of the EVs that I own, just to make sure there's no compatibility issues. Okay, now what I want to do is in, uh, hook this up with my Flow app. And Flow has a little bit of a different approach. Most other electric vehicle chargers use Wi-Fi connection. Flow uses PLC, it's power line connection. And uh, we're gonna set that up right now. Plug the supplied ethernet cable into the PLC module and then into an open port on your router. You then plug the PLC module into a wall outlet. Now note, you cannot plug it into a power strip. It must be plugged directly into a wall outlet. And once you see the three green lights lit, it's connected. Now once you've done that, open up your Flow app and it's gonna ask you to enter a code. Now that code is on this card that I talked about earlier when we did the unboxing. So make sure you don't throw this out. After you've entered the code, it's gonna ask you if you wanna name your station once you've named it or decided not to name it. Uh, it's gonna then ask you if you want sound alerts from the X5. That's the unit itself. It'll beep under certain conditions. That's, uh, it tells you in the uh, user's manual when it will beep and how it will beep and so forth. You can decide if you wanna set that up or not. Now that's it. You're all set up, you're hooked up, and the station is now linked to your app. Um, you could also set a schedule once you've done that. If let's say you have a time of use plan, you could set a time of use schedule. If you pay uh, lower electricity rates overnight, you can do that at that point there. And also if you wanna set the charger to deliver reduced power, that's where you do it. You have to do it actually within the scheduling, which is very interesting. Usually in the settings allows you to just dial down the power yourself. But with a flow, you have to actually set a schedule and then reduce the power in the schedule. I found that a little odd and it was even uh, a little bit stranger that they don't really tell you this in the instructions. Uh, and I actually talked to Flo about this and they actually said, you know, you're right. Um, we need to correct that. So I think they're gonna be printing up new instructions to go out with the new flow units because currently it doesn't really explain anywhere in the instructions how to change the amperage on the X5. On the G5, it does tell you because within the instructions, it shows you that little wheel where you set it, which is inside the unit. But with the X5, you have to do it in the app and there's currently no instructions and tell you how to do it. So you have to do it through the schedule, which took me a while to figure out and some emails to flow because I figured it would just be in the settings, which is how usually when the electric vehicle chargers have a uh, adjustable output, it's in the settings. But with the flow, you've got to do it within the schedule. You have to set a schedule. You basically tell it you know, to, for all the time to run on this amperage, but um, it's a little clunky. Uh, I think Flow could improve upon that. Uh, and then once you've done that, now you've got uh, access to all of your charging data. And what I like about it is it merges your public charging with your home charging. So you can see all of your charging sessions, uh, whether you use the Flow network or your home charger, uh, all in one nice, uh, neat area, kind of like what ChargePoint does, which I like, they, they merge all that data also. So you could see all of your charging, uh, where you've charged, how long you've charged for, how many kilowatt hours you've put into your battery pack. So in that regard, the Flow app is good, but I think they need to uh, make it a little bit more user-friendly. So I've been using the X5 now for a couple of weeks, and I think I have a good feel for what I like and don't like about it. We'll start with some of the things that I do like. I think the ergonomics is really exceptional. That's probably something that not a lot of people talk about with electric vehicle chargers, but it's one of the things that I really hone in on. You know, if you have an electric vehicle, you're gonna be using this thing maybe every day, but at least a couple times a week, and the ergonomics is important. I really like, first of all, I like the style of it. I know style is subjective. I should also mention that the X5 that I have here is in carbon, but Flow doesn't offer it in carbon color anymore, only nickel. You can still find them available in carbon on Amazon, but once the inventory is sold out, the X5 will only come in nickel color. Moving forward, the G5 will be the one that's available in carbon. 
As far as usability, I like this uh, cable management system in the front. Now, I guess if it hung on the top, it wouldn't be that much of a difference, but I, I do like this ergonomically. I love the connector. This is a great connector. It feels good in your hand. It has a ro soft rubberized grip. It's contoured to fit in your hand. I love this connector holster here, and which is backlit. I, I wondered earlier when I did the unpacking, but this is backlit. So if the garage is dark or wherever it's parked is dark, this helps you find. And I love how this is tapered, this big opening here. You just slide it in and it always latches very easily. I've struggled with some of the other chargers that I've reviewed where it have to be perfect to get it to latch in and, and it's it can be a troublesome. This is something you have to do almost every day. You want it to be nice and easy. So I think Flo did their homework with the ergonomics, the design of this. I think it's a really well-designed unit. Has a long cable, 25 feet long, which uh, performed very well. Uh, you're gonna see in a few minutes in some of our tests. And um, uh, 25 feet's actually the longest that you're allowed to have by code. So this is the longest cable you'll get on any electric vehicle charger. It's a relatively thin cable. It's very flexible. Usability on this unit is fantastic. Now, one of the things I do have to talk about on the downside is it's only a 30 amp charger. So it can deliver about 7.2 kilowatts to your electric vehicle. You're probably gonna get somewhere right around seven as I did. Um, and that's a lower powered unit compared to some of the other electric vehicle chargers on the market. Most of the new chargers coming on the market are 40 amp or 48 amp chargers. And uh, they can charge electric vehicle faster. Um, how much faster? So let's say for my Bolt EV, this unit here will add about 30 miles of range for every hour it's charging. Now, take a look at my uh, Rivian R1S, for instance. That'll only add about 15 miles of range per hour. Well, why is that, you say? A lot of people get confused with this. How come some EVs charge so much slower than, than others? Well, they're accepting the same amount of power, the seven kilowatts, but it's what the vehicle does with that power that dictates how fast it charges. So while they'll be getting the same amount of power, my Bolt can go twice as far on one kilowatt hour of energy than my Rivian R1S can. So therefore, uh, typically a bigger vehicle like an SUV, an electric SUV is gonna have a bigger battery, uh, which the Rivian R1S does, much bigger battery. It's about 130 kilowatt hour compared to the Bolts, which is only around 55 kilowatt hour. So would I recommend this if you had an electric vehicle with a very big battery, like a Hummer EV? Probably not. Um, because they're inefficient vehicles and they use a lot more energy. You need to pump more energy back into them quicker. Uh, but uh, I think the, the balance is going to be about 100 kilowatt hour. If your electric vehicle has a battery that's larger than 100 kilowatt hour, you might want a, a higher powered charger, a 40 amp, 48 amp charger. You could even get an 80 amp charger like this here if your vehicle can accept 80 amps. But for most other electric vehicles, if your battery is less than 100 kilowatt hour and you don't drive 200 miles every day and need to completely recharge your battery every day, a 30 amp charger is probably gonna be just fine for you and, and, th and this would work. Uh, but I do wish it was higher powered. I like so much about this flow unit, uh, but the fact that it's it's kind of limited to 30 amps is a little bit of a downer. If, if flow put together this exact package in a 48 amp charger, it would really be very high in my personal preference for electric vehicle chargers, but we'll get into the ratings at the end of the review here. Uh, and the only other thing that I'll complain about a little bit is its size. It's really big. It takes up a lot of real estate on the wall. Now, a lot of people don't care about that, but it's one of the things I nitpick on. I prefer the chargers that are in smaller packages and take up less real estate. You can see the Tesla universal wall connector next to me, which isn't a very small unit in itself, and it's smaller than this. Now, it's not quite as big as the a Ford Charge Station Pro, but that's an 80 amp unit that's a bi-directional charger. So it needs a lot more components on the inside of it, which is why it's as big as it is. But Ford probably could have made that smaller anyway. So this is big. If you want to compare it, say, to the ChargePoint Home Flex, which is a 50 amp charger, you could see that it's much smaller. It takes up a lot less real estate and uh, it's kind of uh, unnecessarily large in my opinion. But uh, the casing is just, this thing is, so well made. It's so solid. It's so heavy. It's the heaviest charger we, we have here in the garage. And I have like 
70 or 80 chargers in the garage. So this thing is really made well, and it's one of the things that Flow promotes. It's toughness, it's durability, it's made to survive Canadian winters, outdoors, and uh, the proof is in the pudding, it does, because Flow's had this out for many years now, and uh, the owners re have reported that it can withstand even the harshest outdoor temperature. So that's a consideration if you live in, a, in an area that gets very harsh weather and you're going to mount your charger outside and you can live with 30 amps, the, I think this might be a very good choice for you. It's time for our cable deep freeze test. I put the Flow X5 in this ice cream freezer chest 24 hours ago. It's been in a deep freeze. We're doing this to see how flexible the cable is once it's been exposed to extreme cold temperature for a long period of time. Now, if you live in some of the southern states, this might not be a problem, but if you live in a northern state and up in Canada where Flow is manufactured, this is an important test, particularly if you mount your charger outdoors, which a lot of people have to do. Uh, when the cables become very stiff in the winter, it's really hard to work with. So we're going to see how bendable the cable is. I have high hopes that the Flow's cable is going to do well. Number one, because it's a Canadian company and th they're serving that area and they understand that the cable flexibility is a big issue. But number two, as I mentioned earlier in the review, the cable felt really rubberized. And the rubbery, the more rubberized the jacket is on the cable, the better they seem to perform. The jackets that are uh, plasticky get really stiff and they don't bend at all. So I have high hopes the flow is gonna do well. First, let's see how cold it is in here. Negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty cold, and as I said, it's been in there for 24 hours. Now let's take the unit out and see how well she does. Okay, so my cable with the plug here is super stiff. That is not meant. It won't even let me hang it properly on the wall. Okay, so now let's take a look at the cable. Now my initial reaction is pretty good. It's, it's see how it's returning to form? I, I wrapped it up in these tight loops as I always do, and then I try to unravel it, and then I, what you want is the cable to be nice and flexible. You want me to easily be able to uh, hang it back up in larger loops. Okay, there we go. You can see all the ice on the cable here. Okay, that's pretty good. You see this? See how it's bending and flexible already? That's really good performance. I wouldn't quite say it's as good as the ChargePoint Home Flex. I, I think that cable still is a little bit better, but this is very close. It might be even as good as the ChargePoint Home Flex. This is definitely one of the top cold weather cables that we've tested so far. Um, you could see it's, look at that. I mean, I know it's warming up in the last few seconds it's been out, but this has been deep freezing for 24 hours. And uh, for it to be able to return to being that flexible that quickly, this is a very good cold weather cable and it's gonna get an extra point on our charger rater for that. Okay, while we still have the connector all iced up and frozen, we're gonna do the connector drop test. What we do is from about what waist height, which is where someone might drop uh, the connector from, we drop it on this hard concrete floor five times to see if the connector breaks. And that fell right on the edge that time, right on the front edge. Okay, one more time, I'll go a little higher. All right, nope, no, no damage, and I didn't expect there to be. This really seems like a, an exceptionally well-made connector. It's one of the better connectors on the market for sure, and uh, this top piece here being metal, you can see it's all iced up. This piece here is super strong. The connector has a rubberized grip. Um, it's really good to grab. It, it, you can see here it's contoured for your uh, hand to grab. Um, definitely, uh, you know, top five connector that I've tested uh, on for all of the charging equipment. This is an outstanding connector. It's a very good cable, super well-built unit. I mean, 
this thing is <laughs> really it's built to last so uh, okay for the cable deep freeze test and connector drop test we've got a pass on both next up we're going to do the automatic restart test with the automatic restart test i simulate a power outage by shutting off the circuit breaker while the charger is charging one of my electric vehicles. I then wait a couple of minutes, turn the circuit breaker back on to make sure that the charger begins charging the EV again. We've noticed that's not always the case. Sometimes the chargers enter a fault state and they don't re-engage the car, continue charging it. What happens then is let's say you had a temporary power outage overnight while you were sleeping, you wake up in the morning and your EV isn't charged. So I'm gonna pull my Chevy Bolt EV into the garage, plug in the flow, get it charging, shut the power off, turn it back on. We'll make sure that the flow will re-engage and continue charging an EV once power is restored. Okay, so it only took a little more than a minute from the time I restored power for the Flow X5 to begin charging my bolt here again. As you can see, the blue light is back on the Flow. The green blinking light is on the dashboard of the Bolt EV. That means she's charging, so that's a pass for the automatic restart test. And finally, we're gonna do our extreme heat test. I've had this heat lamp baking on the Flow Home X5 for two hours now. The outside temperature of the charger here is 133 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see what the connector is. The connector is 129 degrees Fahrenheit. I've had it on for about two hours. I'm now gonna plug in my Rivian R1S let the charger charge at the full rate, 30 amps that it can deliver for two hours to see if the unit will continue to charge at the full 30 amps. So I'm gonna leave the heat lamp on the unit for the whole time. Hopefully the flow will continue to deliver the 30 amps and it won't derate its power or even possibly shut off. So let's plug in the Rivian R1S now. We'll check back in two hours and see how well it did. Okay, been charging for two hours and I've been monitoring the charging the whole time and the flow was delivering seven kilowatts, the maximum it can put out 30 amps to the Rivian R1S the entire time. The two hour charging session, we added a little more than 14 kilowatt hour of energy. So yes, uh, didn't have any problems, delivered the full amount the full time. Let's see how hot this guy is now. 161 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's warmed up quite a bit, which is normal. Uh, during uh, Typically, charging is going to warm up the charger, even if there wasn't a heat lamp on it. Uh, we notice this all the time, just from it delivering all the energy over many hours continuously. The units do warm up themselves, and it's part of the reason why I'm doing this test now, because specifically for people that are out in um, really warm weather climate areas, I have followers that live in Arizona that say they have problems with their charging equipment sometimes, particularly when it's installed outside in direct sunlight, where the unit will derate if it gets too hot or even shut off. So uh, that's why I added this new test. I still may tweak it a little bit, but um, for now, at least the flow seems to be able to handle extreme heat hotter than what it's rated at. Um, as you remember, the, the rating was for 122 degrees Fahrenheit. This thing's cooking at uh, 160 degrees now, and uh, it's been pumping the uh, full amount of juice to the vehicle the whole time. So that's a pass on our extreme heat test. Well, that's it for the review. The only thing that's left are the ratings. And for that, we're gonna first go to my charger rater, the point-based rating system I've developed here for my electric vehicle charging equipment. First up, we'll look at the cost and value category. For cost, it loses two points because it's $695. For value, I'm gonna also ding it for one point here. I'm gonna give it a below average value because of the fact that it's $695 and it only delivers 30 amps. So it finishes up the cost and value category with 12 points for power and weatherproof rating. 
For max charging power, it loses two points because it can deliver less than 40 amps. For adjustable power, it gets one point because you can adjust it in the app. For extreme heat test, it gets one point because it passed our test. For the weatherproof rating, it gets two points because this is a NEMA 4 rated charger, which is good for extreme weather. It is Energy Star certified, so it gets a point. It passed our automatic restart test, gets another point. It's gonna finish up the power and weatherproof rating category with 19 points for construction and durability. For connector and holster, it's gonna get two points because I'm very impressed with both the connector and how it holsters into the unit. For cable length, it gets two points. For cable pliability, it gets two points. You saw it performed very well in our cable deep freeze test. For robust construction, it's gonna get one extra point because this is a very well-made unit. For removability, no points. Ease of installation, no points. So it finishes up the construction and durability category with 22 points. For smart and non-smart, it gets two points because it is a smart charger. It gets one point because it can power share, it can power share with up to two units. It is not Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant compatible, no points there. It does have extensive charging data. It shows you all your previous charging history, both from the home unit and your public charging on the Flow Network. I think that's very good. It gets a point there. It is an OCPP compliant charger, so it gets one point there. And it finishes up the smart and non-smart category with 20 points. For safety certified and warranty, it is a safety certified unit. You don't get any extra points for that. It has a five year warranty, a very long warranty, one of the longest in the industry. So it gets five points for that. And it finishes up the safety certified and warranty category with 20 points. That gives the Flow Home X5 a total of 93 points, a very good score for the Flow unit. When I convert that to our five star rating, it tallies out to 4.65 stars out of five. And then we take the charger reader score and average it in with my personal score. I'm gonna give the Flow Home X5 a 4.45 star out of five, slightly less than what the charger rated added up to. And that's really because of the fact that it's limited to 30 amps. Most of the electric vehicle charging equipment today can deliver more power. Uh, and at the price point that the Flow is at, you're, you're paying for the construction, the durability, the premium product that it is, uh, and you're not getting the power I think that you should at that price point. And that's the only real knock that I have on it. A lot of people can live fine with 30 amps. For those people, I think this is a great option. But if you need more power, the Flow X5 and G5 just won't cut it for you. Um, so when I take the charger rater score, my personal score, and average them together, the Flow Home X5 gets a final score of 4.55 stars out of 5. Next up, let's take a look at my hits and misses. Okay, we'll start off with the hits. First up is the high quality construction. This unit is made very well. It's built to last and it can sustain being installed in any type of harsh environment. It has an excellent cable and connector. I explained my thoughts on that throughout the video. Flo did a really good job with that. And it's stylish with very good ergonomics. This is the type of charger I would like to use for daily use. Just the ergonomics of it work perfectly for me. Next up, we'll go into the misses. I really can't ignore the low uh, power output. The fact that this is an only a 30 amp charger when most of the units on the market today are 40 amps or 48 amps, that's a big miss there. And I think Flow is gonna correct that at some point in the near future. I think they have to. They have to put out a higher power charger. They really nailed it with all the features on the charger. The thing's a great unit, but it needs to put out more power. And it's pricey particularly when you consider the fact that it's only a 30 amp charger, $695. I know it's a high quality product and uh, you know it's worth the fact that it's built as well as it is, but when you look at the fact that it's only a 30 amp charger and it's $700 or 695, that's a mess in my opinion. And as far as the PLC connection, I much prefer when these chargers are Wi-Fi connected. I'm not a fan of the PLC connection. I've had flow units in the past that I've installed at my house where I had problems 
with different PLC units in my house. One of the problems with PLC is when you have multiple PLCs in your house like I have, they can conflict with each other and you have to find a circuit that the other PLC device isn't on. Uh, it just, it makes it difficult installation. I'm not a PLC fan. I would wish that Flow had a Wi-Fi connection for their chargers. Well, that's a wrap for our Flow Home X5 full review. We hope that you learned a little bit about this unit and helped you decide if you want to buy it or not. We're going to add it to our recommended list. I think it's a really good unit. Uh, the big drawback is its power outputs 30 amps. But as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people with a lot of EVs can live just fine charging on 30 amps. Listen, if this is your first time here, please don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.